Hey, I'm Jordy. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking riding gear. All of the things that I need to wear to both protect myself, keep myself dry, keep myself warm. I'm perhaps maybe a little bit more concerned about being too warm since I'll be mostly along the equator, but it will get cool in the mountains, I'm sure. So uh, staying warm, staying dry, staying protected. So the centerpiece of my riding gear really kind of revolves around Moscow Moto. I, I chose Moscow for my jacket and my pants, and we'll take a closer look at those. And the other, obviously, most important component to protecting yourself is your helmet. And there's a lot of good helmets out there on the market for adventure travel, and I have chosen the Arai XD4. I looked at some other helmets, and I'll talk more about those, but um, I'm a somewhat of a brand loyalist and there's a lot of good brands out there for motorcycle adventure travel and you'll see when I show you close up a little bit more close up on all of the components but Moscow Moto features centrally and then I've also uh, bought a fair amount of Revit, Climb, uh, Liat. Those are this kind of the centerpieces of my gear so without further ado let's uh, take a closer look at what I've got. There's a lot of good videos online, um, on YouTube, online, about technical specifications and sort of deeper reviews, people who have used the gear longer. I'm really just going to focus on what I picked out for my adventure around the world travel, specifically Latin America, and kind of why, why I picked it, what I chose and why I picked it, and hopefully that's helpful to you if you're a rider. If you're not a rider, maybe, if, again, you, like my other videos, you find this interesting to teach you a little bit more about all of the things that go into adventure travel. There's a lot. So anyway, um, let's jump in and take a look at all of the pieces of gear I am using. Okay. Okay, Moscow Moto, the Basilisk jacket. This is my jacket. Let's take a step back out. And I'm really excited about this jacket. I like it a lot thus far, although I haven't really used it very much. I've been wearing, I live in Florida, so I've been wearing kind of a lighter jacket. Um, mesh very lightweight jacket for riding around Florida but this will be my go-to jacket for my adventure travel around the world going through Latin America and I chose this jacket over others mostly for its its overall concept its construction everything but it's more lightweight than a lot of other jackets on the market and when I say lightweight I don't mean that it's any less heavy duty it's not this jacket is really heavy duty However, I was able to go to my local BMW dealer, which carries climb gear. <laughs> go figure, the BMW dealer carries climb gear. Um, but I was able to try on several climb jackets that I was interested in, which were more on the heavy-duty touring, adventure travel, all-weather touring jackets. And while they were very nice, I own a bunch of climb gear. I'm a fan of climb gear. While they were real nice, I mean, very, very nice jackets, expertly constructed, um, and the best materials you can get really but they were extremely heavy I mean these things were like in terms of weight in terms of construction I think a lot of them had armor in them and um, because they were so heavy they were felt very restrictive and sort of hard to move in and uncomfortable and especially for travel in Latin America I get hot easily and I just thought I would be extremely uncomfortable in these jackets so in d conducting my research I came upon Moscow and I began reading about their products and learned that their jacket, their concept behind their jacket was to not employ any armor in the jacket, make it more lightweight and then you can wear whatever armor you choose to buy separately underneath your jacket and uh, just have a light, more lightweight jacket. Now as I said that doesn't mean it's any less heavy duty, this thing is super heavy duty. Um, it's also waterproof, that was a big thing for me. I didn't want to have to buy a separate waterproof layer to take out and put on if in the event of rain. So when it comes to waterproof, really there's two main fabrics that are out there. There's Gore-Tex, which probably everybody knows about, and then there's this one, which is Event. And Event, you can see waterproof there, Event Waterproof is another company that makes a waterproof fabric and um, this jacket is not the most current one the new one is available now for pre-order and i think the event technology fabric has even been updated to have an even better um, waterproof membrane in it but uh, event is another as i said fabric compatible comparable to gore-tex i don't know if it's 
exactly as good as Gore-Tex. There's debate out there. Moscow, I think, has some videos where they talk about event. You could look at their website or their YouTube channel or whatever and decide for yourself if you have the confidence in event. I have the confidence in event is what I've gone for. Um, the other main thing they have is you can see all this black is called their abrasion panels. And these are like, I think, two ply or something very heavy duty for your more impact zones. Um, all the way along the arms, shoulders. So those were the big criteria for me. I really liked its waterproof technology. I'm going with Event. I liked the heavy duty, um, really thick abrasive protection for skids. Um, the collar is a suede, which is really nice. There's two inside pockets, which is cool. And I just discovered this on this zipper. This is pretty wild. On this zipper right here, I think this is a little tool to help you um, change your SIM card on your phone. Right in here, I can't get it out. It, it, this little tool comes out right here. There, I got it, finally. And you've got a SIM card tool. I think that's what that is, but that's what I'll be using it for, so that's super cool. Um, what else? You've got cinch straps on either side to cinch in. You can sort of see it winding through the bottom there. You've also got another like rain flap layer um, that snaps on either side. You've got, as I said, two inside pockets. I think the zippers are made by YKK, which makes really good um, waterproof zippers. Two pockets on the outside. And then these are, the top are vents. That's a vent, that's a vent. There's vents on the arms, short, kind of shoulder arm area, right here on either side. Um, there's Velcro at the sleeves. Let's look at the back. On the back, you have vents as well on either side, venting out of the back. You can see um, this fabric is called Super Fabric. Is there, um, I guess, proprietary anti abrasive, protective, dual layer, skid protective fabric? Um, then another cool thing on the back is you have two panels that Velcro to help you adjust sort of the tapered fit of it and you know cinch in the sides on either side, one there and one here on the other side. So you can cinch in the sides to give yourself a more tapered fit. And that's the Basilisk jacket. Really, that's about all I have to say about it. Um, again, my choice for the quality of construction, the waterproofing, and the lighter weight because I'll wear armor underneath it and then uh, I'll be protected that way and I don't have to wear a really crazy heavy jacket. I mean, some of the other ones on the market get a whole lot more heavy than this. This is this is a lot more manageable. I think it weighs, you can look at their website, something like three point something pounds. And I bet you competitors are a lot more heavy than that. Okay, be right back and talk about the Basilisk pants. Okay, here's the Basilisk pants. Moscow Moto Basilisk. Um, I weigh about 170, 5'10", 170, and I bought the medium jacket, and I've bought the 34 pants, just to give myself plenty of room with the pants. They come with this belt, crazy heavy-duty belt. I uh, really like it. And on the pants, uh, also Event technology. And also um, super fabric panels across the knees. You can see super fabric. Um, two pockets, one on either side. That's a pocket. And then uh, huge vents on either side. This is a vent. You can see the mesh for airflow. So 
this is another vent and this is another pocket here's a whole side vent along the side same on the on this side side vent going all the way up the side very cool velcro on the fly four no uh, two snaps to close it off you can pick which two you use depending on what you need at the bottom we got heavy-duty protection where your boots will rub or where you'll you'll hit your motorcycle frame here's the back I think that pretty much shows it not too much to tell other than um, again this is there's no armor in this so you know I'll be wearing knee armor heavy-duty riding boots and also probably impact shorts underneath or and or like a base layer of either like a moisture wicking base layer that's like a mesh neoprene or if it's cold I have a, a merino wool base layer so Moscow Moto, like I said, really pleased with it. I'm going with the event technology and going with Moscow, lighter weight, no armor, wear armor underneath, and um, that's it. it. For this demo, I would, had thought about putting all of my gear on and trying to show it that way so that you could see it on me. However, two things. Number one, it's crazy hot here today in Florida, and I'm already sweating, and I thought that would just be really uncomfortable and difficult. And number two, it's just me filming, so... Um, it would be hard to film myself and act, be able to really show this gear um, if I have it all on and I'm trying to film myself. So, okay, those are the pants. Let's move on to the helmet now. Here is my Arai XD4. And I love this helmet so far. I tried several others. I tried in the store. I went to my local store, um, Cycle Gear and try it on the showy, which was really nice as well. I just thought the Arai fit me a little bit better. I think this is a size large for me. Um, you know, obviously DOT certified and everything. You can see Arai XD4, DOT. A um, couple things about it. You can look up all the specs on the Arai. I'm not gonna go into all those. It's got about a million different vents on it. <laughs> not a million, but there's a lot of vents. Um, I really like the venting, although for moto vlogging, you have to close most of your vents so that you can reduce your wind noise. Um, I, I invested in the Cardo Pack Talk Black, which you can see here, and I love it so far. I got it mostly just for the reason of being able to listen to music. I'm a big, big music fan. I need to have some music. I can't go for hours without music. So... Uh, that's why I got that and it's it works really really well it can just connect to my iPhone talk to Siri all I have to say is hey Siri play music or whatever and music comes on and I love it it's like a magical um, I went with I don't know if it's standard or was an upgrade but I got the JBL speakers inside my helmet and it's, I mean, it sounds great I love it obviously you can make phone calls from it too I haven't even done that I'm not trying to probably do that but uh, that is that so Arai XD4 the GoPro overheated, go figure. So just to sum up the Arai, as I said, not going into all the details and specs on it because I probably wouldn't do a good job of that. But um, I chose it because it's, I think it's basically, if not the highest rated helmet, one of the highest rated helmets for adventure uh, sport riding. You know, you've got Arai, you've got the Shoei, you've got some climb helmets, maybe Scorpion. Um, and this may be the highest rated traditionally. It's just got a great history of quality construction and is highly regarded among, among the community of adventure riders. And I tried it on, it fit me better than other helmets and I chose it. Okay, a couple other just little details. I mentioned the Cardo, but uh, if you're curious about this, I went with chin mounts as my GoPro mount. And um, you can see here, chin mounts. So that is uh, 3M, you heat it up a little bit and stick it on there and it's on really, really well, it's not coming off. So 
that's my Arai helmet with the chin mount and the Cardo Pack Talk. All right, when I was talking about the Moscow Moto pants and the jacket for that matter, I was talking about the need for putting on armor beneath. And with the pants, I've bought these. These are made by Liat. And they are their impact shorts that have uh, hip protection, kind of leg protection, waist protection, tailbone protection. That's the backside of the tailbone right there. Um, this isn't really armor. I don't know what they call this, but it's, I don't know if you can see my finger pressing in, but it's just a, you know, good reinforcement. I haven't even worn these yet because I've just been wearing riding jeans around town for more off-road adventure traveling. I probably will wear these beneath the Moscow Moto pants. In addition to those, I may wear this as well, or I may wear these, and these are a base layer made by Climb. You can see it's a very thin um, sort of mesh material. These are the pants. Very, very light. And I also have the shirt. Here's the shirt, climb. So uh, these are my base layers and I have two pair of these. And then I also bought, they make a merino wool one. So leggings and a top. So I have a wool one, which are also rather lightweight, but uh, should be moisture wicking, I believe, and a whole lot warmer than those for colder conditions. Okay, for gloves, gloves are really important. I, I haven't gotten a pair of really heavy duty gloves. Um, I, I thought about it. Climb makes some really great ones. Uh, the Badlands, I think, are what they're called, and they're phenomenal. Their gloves can get crazy expensive, two, three, four hundred dollars. I'm just going with these Revit gloves for now. Um, they do have a palm slider, which I think is nice. If you go down, you won't shatter sort of your palm right there. Um, so I'll be wearing these. I haven't even worn these yet. I have a different pair of gloves that I've just been wearing right now, some climb gloves, which maybe I'll show. I think I'm gonna, if you stay tuned, show some of my just riding gear that I've been wearing around town and haven't gotten to, um, that, I won't be, that I won't be using for this adventure travel. But, so I'm gonna go with these Revit gloves for the adventure travel and I may need to invest in something more heavy duty, but I think these will be, you know, pretty good protection and they're lightweight and compactable and, and more suited toward uh, warmer climates. They're vented and um, not Gore-Tex, they're not waterproof, so that could be an issue, but I'll just have to deal with that. I'm not really planning to ride in the rain. If it rains, I'll probably pull over and just wait it out. Or if I have to ride in the rain, then I'll just have to deal with that. Speaking of rain, I have a couple pieces of protection here. This is the Climb Torrent Collar, which can uh, kind of interface between your jacket and your helmet to keep rain out if it rains. So waterproof torrent storm collar made by Climb. Pretty cool thing to have. And then this is their Climb. Uh, this is really kind of lightweight. You can just scrunch up into less than the palm of my hand. But this is a um, warmer, neck, neck gaiter warmer. So I'll keep that on hand for cooler climates. If I get cold, I can throw that on my neck. Finally, um, you may have noticed these on the table, I don't know, but I've gotten into the habit of wearing sort of like a neoprene, really lightweight um, skull cap underneath the helmet just because you get hot and sweaty. I think this will just keep the helmet cleaner, less sweaty on the pads inside. So I wear, I just bought these inexpensively off of Amazon. Um, and I have a couple of them. And so I wear that under the helmet and, and I like it. It's, uh, I think it kind of saves the helmet a little bit. Okay, let's move on now to the chest armor. I haven't shown that yet. Chest armor, again by Liat. And this is their two piece system. I think this might be called like the protector system, but um, it involves two pieces. And the first is this uh, compression jacket. It's a zippered zip up 
you can see the zipper going all, all the way up to the neckline. Um, compression, it's, it's form-fitting, tight-fitting jacket that has the central features of it are shoulder protection, elbow protection, um, a little bit extra here on the shoulders of padding, and then a kidney belt going across your waistline to protect your guts. But uh, the shoulder and elbow pads are level one protection, so not, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy duty armor, but pretty good. You know, I think that'll help in the event of a slide. So that's the bottom piece that you wear. I will probably wear this either directly on my skin or on top of the climb base layer that I showed. And here is what goes over it. And this is the heavy duty chest and back protector. And this is level two armor. Uh, you can see CE level two armor layout. Yeah, this is 6.5. So it's the protector 6.5 series. And so the back, it has side flaps that go around your sides here. This thing is heavy duty. Um, and then it has these clasps that clasp it shut. Easy to get on and off, just stick it over your head and then clasp it on either side. One there and one here. So that's that, not too much to show really. Um, it's adjustable at the shoulders, kind of, you can set the length that you need, need the armor to hang at basically for the back. This is the whole, ba this is the back side, 6.5. So full back armor kind of articulated there where it meets your waistline, your tailbone. So back and chest armor made by Liat. And I'm really pleased with that. Now let's move on to uh, boots. I didn't talk about boots and for boots, I have chosen the city or CD, S-I-D-I. S-I-D-I, CD. And these are the Adventure 2. Adventure 2 built boots made with Gore-Tex. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I chose these because they're waterproof, Gore-Tex, so that was key for adventure travel, especially throughout Latin America, where it will be probably rainy and wet and have water crossings and stuff like that. Um, there is this sort of flex system that's built into it that uh, I guess is supported by the rear structure of the boot and gives it just some better flex. You could read more about that on their website. It has a two buckle system. <clears throat> and then the top, the whole top velcros. So you can really kind of get it as tight as you need to adjust it to your, to your leg, your shin, your leg. Reinforcing on the boot for where you hit the levers. Two buckles, they're adjustable. You can look up more info if you wish on the city boots, but those are my boots. And um, so far so good. I've only worn them several times. To, I haven't really gotten them broken in yet, but I think they will get me where I'm going. There's a lot of great boots on the market and these things, boots get crazy expensive. That was also a sort of a determining factor for me. These weren't as crazy expensive as other brands out there. I know Alpine Stars are really highly rated. Um, I'm sure they're great. I didn't really want to spend that level of money on them. And they also felt, I've, I've been a skier my whole life. They looked like just crazy high tech and, and more like ski boots to me. And, and I don't know, they just, I really like the aesthetics of these CD boots better as well. I like the brown sort of leather looking color of looking almost more like hiking boots or more like adventure travel gear to me really than these really <clears throat> high tech looking boots made by other companies. So there's the boots. Be back in a second with more stuff. Last couple components for my adventure travel. And here's another important one. These are my knee protectors, knee pads. And these are made by EVS. Now, again, as I've said for the other products, there's myriad products on the market, tons of things to choose from, and it gets overwhelming and difficult to 
determine what could be best for you. And it's hard to be able to try things on. Really, everything's online these days. So it's hard to decide, really. Um, so maybe I can help you a little bit here. I got, I think I originally did spring for the Alpine Stars. Um, you know, they're, they're bionic ones, I believe it's called. The top, they're top of the line with a like big, heavy-duty knee brace. I thought it would be great to have the most protection possible. And, you know, no one wants to injure their knees. That's kind of a critical component to your body. So I thought I'd get these, these top of the line, heavy duty knee protectors. And I got them and while the construction, the craftsmanship, everything was top notch, they were just, I, they weren't for me. They were not very comfortable to me, to my body. Potentially I got the wrong size. I don't think I really did. I don't remember what size I got, but I think they were, I measured and followed their instructions and got the size that I think was appropriate for my body. But they were just, they were very, very heavy. They were very constrictive. Uh, I just didn't like them. And so I was speaking actually with my man Joe of Yankro Fairing, and Joe put me on to EVS, and he kind of agreed with me on my assessment of the more heavy duty, whether it's Alpine Stars or other companies that make the really heavy duty brace, you know, on the sides, they have these whole humongous mechanical braces and everything. And he kind of agreed with me and said he's been using this company EVS and he likes them. Now, these are not extremely heavy duty, um, but I like these. So I, I don't mean that as a, as a negative on EVS. I'm sure these are designed this way to be lightweight because if they were more heavy duty, then they wouldn't be lightweight. I would guess that this level of protection is probably level one armor. Um, you can see it's, it's just, it's just not, you know, super heavy duty like this chest armor um, anyway so I went with these because they're lighter weight and they've got three straps one at the top two at the bottom to strap on and so far I like them a lot I you know I haven't really done adventure travel locally here in Jacksonville like off-road trail riding so I haven't really had the occasion to wear these I don't wear them for everyday riding but I have tried them on worn them around the house a little bit and they are much more comfortable than the more heavy-duty big time braced out heavy duty knee protection that you can buy like I said from various companies and I'm happy with these so that's what I'm going with you know you can always just go crazy with protection and or you could just not ride a motorcycle at all and then, then you'd be the most protected but these are not the most protection but I hope they'll be enough and you know I think protection also comes in the form of your rider comfort and your ability to feel comfortable and confident and content in your riding and these enable me to feel that way so I think that's an important consideration to make too when choosing something like this is are you comfortable do you feel good are you confident in your riding and that goes a long way towards probably improving and enhancing your safety finally I'll make a quick mention I've bought two pair of these Revit socks um, I'm not sure what these are called actually. They just are their lighter weight um, travel socks that, you know, you can see how long they are, so they should go up to the top of the boot length. I bought a pair of Climb uh, really heavy duty socks for more for cold weather, winter conditions, and I don't think I'll actually end up even bringing those because they're just, they look really nice. I mean, everything Climb makes is really nice. All these companies are really nice, so I'm really happy with the quality of all of these companies. Um, but those climb socks are just, they're just huge. And if it's really that cold out, I, I don't know, I'll figure something out, but I don't have room for everything. Um, okay. A couple, one more thing to show here, um, is I mentioned, you know, one of the, the attractive points, and this is by design, um, with respect to Moscow is their jacket and pants being lightweight, specifically the jacket, no armor in the jacket. You wear your own armor beneath the jacket. And so what that en then enables you to do if it's a really hot day, which it will often be probably traveling along the equator throughout Latin America, you could take your jacket off and tie that down on the top of your bike or something, tie it down, and then just wear a jersey over your armor. You know, you don't maybe have as much abrasive protection, but if you're on dirt and you're not on tarmac and you're not going 50 miles an hour and you're only going you know probably 10 or 15 miles an hour maybe tops 20 25 on dirt that you know you could have a serious accident at 20 miles an hour but if you're on dirt 
and you have all of your armor protection on with shoulder and elbow armor, then you could take your jacket off maybe and just wear a jersey underneath. So I have a couple jerseys. I bought a Liat jersey. I've also ordered, it hasn't arrived yet, I think it's arriving today, a the Workhorse jersey, Workhorse jersey from Moscow, which has um, cool thumb holes. I mentioned this, I think, in my Moscow video, um, so that the end of the sleeves have, you know, a ring that can go around your thumb so that it doesn't cinch up and, um, and stays in place better. I don't think this Liat jersey has that. The other jersey that I have, this is pretty cool, <laughs> I think. I bought it off eBay, and it's a vintage... Suzuki jersey. I'm not sure how old this is. It looks fairly old. It's got to be, I would say, Malcolm Smith, um, 80s or 90s or something. I bet you it's 20 years old. Anyway, pretty cool. I bought this Suzuki, vintage Suzuki jersey on eBay. And uh, yeah, I could take my jacket off and just wear this over my armor if, you know, I'm comfortable, feeling confident, and I'm on just, you know, dirt conditions and I want to take my jacket off. So that's the plan there pretty cool. Another thing to mention here is, you know, with respect to the helmet and eyewear. So I am not going to go with goggles. I don't really like goggles. But these right here, ladies and gentlemen, is one of my favorite products of all time. I've always been an enormous fan of Maui Jim. And I don't think there's a better sunglasses maker on the planet, a better lens maker on the planet. There's some other pretty good companies, Costa, Costa Del Mar. But when it comes to eyewear, I'm 100% a Maui Gym guy. I love their products. I love their service. I think they have all kinds of guarantees that if you have problems, you send your glasses back into them. I have in the past, and they get them back to you repaired and all fixed up. These, I believe, are called the Bird Frame. And what makes these extra special for me is that this is actually my first pair of sunglasses that are also prescription glasses. So my girl Maddie over at Pearl Vision in Jacksonville helped me get these all set up. And these are my first pair of sunglasses that have my prescription in them. And it, people, is the biggest game changer ever when it comes to um, eyewear. I mean, having... Maui Gym lenses, which I think are already best in class in terms of their polarization and clarity and their filters. These are like the copper or the brown, um, which I think are recommended for just sort of everyday, all around, outdoor kind of stuff. Obviously outdoor, but uh, they're also, um, but so, okay, so I'm sorry, I've lost my train of thought, but I'm back. So. The filters, the the quality of the polarization, everything, the clarity of their lenses is amazing. But then when you combine that with having your eyeglasses prescription, because I haven't worn glasses that long, only a couple of years. And so then when you combine their best in class lenses with your eyeglass prescription, it's like everything just gets moved into sparkling clarity of it's like watching HD 4K for the first time. I mean... I was literally stunned when I rode home from the store after having picked these up and had them on, just how clear and wonderful everything looks. So I am going with these. I'll be wearing these under my, I slip them on through the front and put them on with my Arai helmet. And that's what I'll be pretty much wearing every day. And if I don't wear those, then I'll just put the, the visor down on the helmet and uh, go with that. So either with the glasses for sunny conditions or just the visor for cloudy conditions but my plan is to ride early in the morning leave when i on the days that i'm riding leave early in the morning my mound of gear here leave early in the morning and travel and get to my destination by lunchtime hopefully you know i'm only looking to travel really like 100 to 200 miles a day which you know if i'm only going if it's back roads and dirt and you're only going 10 miles an hour well then that can be a long time right there but uh so not looking to travel enormous distances every day trying to beat the heat by leaving early in the morning and that is the plan so i can stay cooler by wearing a jersey and trying to beat the heat and staying hydrated okay be right back if you stay tuned i will just show you a couple more quick things on what i've been wearing locally because i've got a couple final pieces of gear that i really love that i've just been wearing like every day throughout florida in terms of pants and boots 
and jacket and I'll show those real quick because I'm very happy these I've gotten a lot of use out of and I'm very happy with all of them okay final mention of products that I've been using and I would recommend that I really am happy with number one is these rabbit riding jeans and I think these are called the Philadelphia um, I don't think it says in here Anyway, um, they came with, uh, in the knees, I believe a, like a level one armor pads, which you can pull out in the knees. The jean material, I believe, is sort of anti-abrasion, reinforced, more heavy-duty jean material. It certainly is more heavy-duty than any kind of normal jeans, um, what you would expect from riding jeans. But I've been really happy with these Revits, and so I thought I would mention them. These are what I've been wearing to ride around in Florida with. Next up for a jacket in Florida... And, you know, I, I just bought this because it was available in the selection of gear at my local cycle gear shop. And this one is a Dionysi. And I bought it, for again, for Florida riding because it's heavily vented. You can see it's like mesh. And it came with an a, um, internal removable waterproof membrane waterproof um, liner. I took it out because obviously then that destroys your venting living in Florida and reduces all of your airflow and it's extremely hot here in Florida so I took out the waterproof shell liner. You can see it like zippers in and out or, or and snaps in I think. Easy to remove, easy to put back in. There's an internal pocket but this jacket has been great. I chose it because it fit. I like the way it looked and it fit really well and also importantly it has um, like level one armor in the elbows and the shoulders. So I thought that was nice if, you know, if you have a fall or something, you, your elbow, which in forearm, the whole padding goes from here to the elbow. So that's all protected. So I like that. And that's why I chose that. And then finally, I mentioned already that I've bought some climb gear and I really like it. I found these climb boots, which I really, really like a lot. Um, Gore-Tex, so these are waterproof. Again, for Florida, it rains here all the time, and I wanted something sort of waterproof to ride around locally and get me through any kind of wet conditions. Um, these are called the Transition GTX boots, and I really like them. I love this um, military-style clasp. You just put your food in, foot in, and then you screw this to tighten it down and then to undo it all you simply do is just lift this up and it just undoes it so really super easy to get in and out of and waterproof Gore-Tex and really comfortable these will be going with me on my trip I have a plane going overhead excuse me for that but you know, space is at such a premium on the trip, and I really want some sort of hiking boots. And it's been really difficult to find space for everything, but I've decided that it would also be nice to not have to, you know, if I get somewhere and I just need to run out and do some errands or go somewhere locally, I want to go ride to an attraction or just riding locally, and it's, I don't need all of the protection in the world from, you know, a big adventure, my big adventure boots then I could throw these on and ride locally. And then since these have, you know, a nice, really um, good traction and everything on the soles, I will wear these as like my hiking boots and they're Gore-Tex waterproof. So I really wanted to bring these, they take, take up quite a bit of space. I mean, they're not huge, but you know, when you have very limited space on a motorcycle, everything counts. So I'm finding a way to smush these into my bag. They'll be my hiking boots and my boots for just local riding because I love them. I've been wearing these for months all around Jacksonville, Florida, where I live, and they've been outstanding. I'm a huge fan of them, and they are coming with me. I don't want to live without them. But I've been happy with this Dionese jacket. Um, very vented, very comfortable for riding around Florida, and I've been really, really happy with these Revit jeans, and these are coming with me too. These will be my only pair of jeans that I'll bring, so again, I could wear these locally. If I'm just somewhere and I need to run out to do some errands or go do something, then I won't put on all of the Revit jeans are coming with me. I love them. They'll be my only pair of jeans that I'm bringing with me. I, I like them so much that I'm happy wearing them. Even if I'm not riding just around, I think they're 
you know, I like the look of them. I like the feel of them. They're really comfortable to wear. They're a little bit heavier, obviously, than normal jeans, but that's okay. So these will be my only pair of jeans. I'm also bringing a pair of cool, K-U-H-L, cool, cool, lightweight hiking pants that'll be khaki color that'll be my other pants so those are my two pair of pants for my trip my cool and my revit jeans for pants and um that will kind of wrap it up if you have any questions or comments on my gear i'd love to hear from you i'll try to answer your questions and see if i can be of help to you if you're a rider this is what i've chosen to bring for my trip to argentina and i think it'll work for me i hope it'll work for me I'm happy with everything thus far with my decisions. As I said, uh, the centerpiece is really kind of revolves around Moscow Moto, and I'm um, really pleased with them. I've bought several things from Moscow, a couple things I haven't even shown from Moscow, like a uh, merino wool hoodie is another thing I've bought from them that I wasn't able to show. I have it packed away already, but that's a nice sort of base layer or thing to have for just wear every day if it's cooler out, merino wool hoodie. As I said, I also ordered their workhorse jersey to wear over the armor as a jersey with the thumb holes. I'm really excited about that. And I also have, I bought, which packs down really, really tightly, their insulated jacket. I think it was called the Jackaloft jacket. And I bought that, and that packs down tiny, and that'll be for colder. I won't wear that riding probably, but for cooler conditions, that's just my only jacket that I'm bringing. So... Lots of stuff from Moscow. I also had out here, which I didn't really show, that I mentioned in um, another video, if you look back. But this is Moscow's um, cable lock, which is really nice. Moscow really makes a bunch of good stuff. I'm sure their luggage is very good. I'm not using them for luggage, but I know their luggage is top-notch as well. And these are their tie-down straps that I've also bought with buckles. So just some sort of lighter weight straps. If to have on hand in the case that you know I want to maybe strap down my jacket and pants onto the top of my case or something so these will probably work for that so that's cool and uh, yeah that should do it um, please comment if you have any questions like subscribe follow me on my journeys this is it for my riding gear Jordy out <laughs>